In this video, we are going to have a look at sparse embeddings and a working demo of one of the models inspired by this sparse embedding that is open search neural sparse encoder. We are going to install it locally and we will try it out on a real world use case. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. If this is the first time you are visiting the channel, please subscribe and like the video as it helps a lot. Now even before I show you the hands-on demo of installation of this model, let's talk a bit more about what exactly is this sparse embedding. Embedding models are models that convert text input into numerical vector representations that capture semantic meaning. That enables mathematical operations like similarity calculation for tasks such as search, clustering, classification and recommendation systems. These embeddings serves as the foundation for modern information retrieval, semantic search and retrieval augmented generation or RAG applications, where the goal is to find content that matches the meaning rather than just exact keywords. So by transforming the text into vectors, embeddings allow computers or models to understand and compare semantic relationship between different pieces of text. There are two primary types of embeddings, dense and sparse. Dense embeddings produce low dimensional vectors, which means they only have 384 to 1024 dimensions in a matrix where most values are non-zero. That creates compact representation that excel at capturing broad semantic relationship, but it lacks the interpretability. Sparse embeddings generate high dimensional vector, which is often 30,000 plus dimensions, where most values are zero, with each active dimension corresponding to a specific vocabulary token and its importance score, making it inherently interpretable for any model. Neural sp sparse models like Split, which have been created by OpenSearch and few other creators, they also perform automatic query expansion, adding semantically related terms that were not in the original text. Sparse embeddings are particularly suited for hybrid search scenarios, domain specific applications, and also situation demanding explainable results such as legal document search or technical documentation retrieval where both exact term matching and semantic understanding matter a lot. So I hope that that clears up what exactly is sparse embedding. Let's now try to get it installed. I'm going to use this Ubuntu system and I have one GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GPU of VRAM. I'm going to start by creating a virtual environment with Konda. If you are also looking to rent a GPU on very affordable prices, you can find the link to master compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. So please do check them out. Okay. Let me take you back to my terminal. Our environment is almost done there. And now we are going to install some of the prerequisites like torch and transformers. While that happens, let me also introduce you to the sponsors who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And the sentence transformers is now installed. Let me clear the screen and show you how to use it in the code. And this is a code where we are using this open search neural sparse encoding model to show you the sparse embedding in action. So if you look at this code, what this code is showing, it is showing this uh, sparse functionality through this model. First, it is loading the model, as you can see from Hugging Face. First time it is going to download it and you don't really need a GPU for this. It's a very lightweight model. You can run it on CPU and then um, from there, we are defining these two queries like what's the weather in New York and then there is another query, so query and a document. And then we are encoding both of them separately using encode query and encode document methods from sentence transformer, I believe. 
and this dual encoding approach is typical for inference free sparse model where queries and documents are processed differently for efficiency it calculates a similarity score between the sparse embedding using this similarity method and then decodes both embeddings to reveal which tokens were activated and their importance scores here finally it iterates through the query tokens to find matching tokens in the documents and display their respective scores let me take you back and run this it is going to download the model first time there you go model is being downloaded and the size is just 268 meg and then you can see that it has computed a similarity score of um you know theirs from and this primarily shows you that it there is a strong semantic match the token breakdown next reveals the sparse embeddings interpretability for example ny from the query matched with new york context in the document and that is why the query score is 5.77 and then we have weather which is appeared prominently in both queries again a query and document and then it is connected with the temporal aspect which is currently and uh, uh, again there are some scores which show how sparse embedding automatically expand and match semantically related terms the model understood that ny refers to new york and connected weather related concepts providing complete transparency into why these texts were deemed similar unlike dense embeddings where the matching process remains opaque so pretty good now, if you're looking for just pure retrieval, I think dense embedding still, you know, wins. But other than that, this looks really promising. Now, now in this second real world example, I am going to show you a legal document search system using sparse embeddings. And this is actually the perfect uh, use case for this technology due to the need for both semantic understanding and exact terminology matching. So you see that after importing everything, we are creating a legal corpus. Of course, you can replace it with your own data. For instance, we have this contract for software license agreement, employment contract, some patent information, some data privacy regulation, lot of legal documents. If you go through them, they are actually the legal documents, and I have just taken the chunk out of them with a the legal lingo and everything. Then we are encoding them just like we did in the previous simple example by using uh, for the question and documents and query and documents. And this is a function which simply goes in and search the similarity. Uh, previously, we were doing one, in this one, I am doing multiple because we have multiple documents, and then I am analyzing the token matching after getting it decoded in the same fashion i have just expanded it and then i am doing the similarity searches on these predefined legal queries or you could give your own i will show you both modes let's run this so what i'm going to do here i'm going to run this it is going to load the model first let's wait so first i'm going to go with the predefined queries which i showed you so i'm going to select one let's wait for it okay so it has done one example let me show you what that example is you see as soon as i selected the mode it has gone into those legal documents first example i did the intellectual property violation matching so you see that if you just come down this is where it has used its most powerful feature where token level transparency is there so the token damages is around you see that 8.06 and then violation and intellectual they all are driving the similarity here and if i come down this is a token level which i was talking about so token by token you can see what has what has happened and what has contributed to the result let's press enter to see another example and then enter to see another example another example there are various examples which i have done so if I go up, it's the same thing. For example, look at this search example five for software licensing royalty payments. Now, now let's try to unpack this. So I will start at the top. So this is searching for software licensing royalty payments in our uh, legal document. So this is just a search term. And then it is telling us that, okay, this is, it, is, it took around this much time. So point, you know, point zero zero 
52 seconds for encoding and this is how long it took for the uh, search now if you look here it is telling us top two headers so it says that here are the two best documents the model found which is um, this one and this one and it is giving you the results about it so if you see the first result in this one it says that this is the title of the document and this is the id of that document which is a unique identity identifier and then if you look here it is giving you the similarity score that how well this document matches our search which is higher and the higher the better as you can see and then also it is telling us this content one which show you know which shows the first 150 character of the actual document text same goes for the second one and then we have token level analysis if you check here what is happening primarily these are the important words from the search like and how much they have scored the higher the better you can see that some of the scores are higher these are the top 10 one and then these are the ones which are still there not as high and these are the matching tokens so this is what is happening now as i said earlier you can also run this example with uh, your own interactive query let's wait for the model to get loaded and then you know you can just uh, type any legal query here like breaking the contract something you know i'm just doing it and randomly let's see there you go so it is uh, for the breaking the contract penalty it is again gone in it has given us this top three results top three documents which match our query and with token level analysis it has told you that you see these are the highest one so it caters to all of these which are matching semantically so i, I hope that that makes sense a uh, very very impressive very high quality model i would say because not only it is um, you know demonstrating this sparse embedding but also i think it clearly is evident that it is useful for legal and these sort of use cases i hope that this was useful please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thank you